Welcome to another Lunch and Learn, everybody. As always, I appreciate you guys spending what little free time you have with us. Uh, I know it's hard to come by, so I appreciate you coming to learn a bit, a little bit about what we're having to offer and hopefully find some value out of it. We are here today, sorry, I gotta get this off my screen, to talk about the CS30. It's like this new data collector. Uh, we'll go into some of the specs. We have the whole lineup here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sh share my uh, screen real quick. CougarRanking.com is our website. My phone number is down there at the bottom right. If you uh, have any questions later on, if you need to call me, it's 253-778-5196. My email is mac at krink.net. Um, I just love this picture here. I call it, uh, why think outside the box when you can live outside the box? All right, so the CS30. It's actually made by Leica. They have it made in China, but that's their, their directed. There's no longer an FCG1 Panasonic that I don't, if you guys have any experience with the CS35 or the FCG1, as a lot of the other manufacturers use it as well, uh, you know that if you have a problem with it, you'll send it to the, the manufacturer and then they'll look at it and be like, oh, no, this is Panasonic's problem. And they'll send it to Panasonic. And Panasonic historically has kind of been a black hole as far as, uh, getting information from them. And then, you know, four months later, eventually your data collector shows back up, maybe. Um, so I think Leica having control of it and, and having a knowledge base to be able to fix everything about it is incredibly valuable. It's got a built-in long range Bluetooth. Whereas with the previous versions of CS35, we had, if you wanted long range Bluetooth, you had to get a dongle like this and stick it in the top, which is, it worked. And it got the same range, but you always had to make sure you knew exactly where this was because it's not cheap. So this is permanently attached. It's built in. It's meant to be with it. Um, and it, it's getting you about 400 meters. It's really good for most, most things we do. Uh, the touchscreen is, I was a little bit worried when I first saw that there wasn't a pen only or a rain setting like the Panasonic had, but the screen is incredibly bright, incredibly easy to touch and not affected by water very much at all. Uh, it's a, I've, I've gotten really good reviews on the usability of this, this data collector in the field in the Northwest where it rains a lot. Um, the battery is hot swappable. What they mean by that is You can run this, it's only got one battery, sorry. You can run this up to three minutes once you remove the battery. So you can take this out, go to your charger, get another battery, pop it back in, and it's still running, which is incredibly helpful, saves you time in the field. Uh, and we all know that's where we make our money. Uh, it's got a, the nano slot for a SIM card. It's a 4G, 3G or 4G, but 3G is pretty much out now. So big thing, Windows 10 over the CS20 is nice because then you, you don't need to go to your computer to send stuff to the office or wait for corrections. You can email, you can do everything else just like a computer straight from your data collector and with your SIM card straight in the field. You don't lose that time of having to go back to your van, open your computer, yada, yada, yada. Um, the, another thing that they did I really, really enjoy is they turned off uh, automatic updates. You can still go in and manually through a process, go through the updates if you choose. But if you dealt with the CS35 at all, you knew every time there was a big Windows update, the Bluetooth would stop working or this would stop working. or it, And it just became a hassle after hassle after hassle to uh, keep up with it. So they've turned that off and you can take the updates if you want or not. I mean, generally what I would do is I would keep them off until a new version of Captivate was released. And then I would do my updates. That way, you know that, that um, everything up until that Captivate version is good to work with that Captivate version. Um, now, if you're not using a tablet, you might be wondering to yourself, why would I want to use a tablet? Oh, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. All right, so since I'm no longer in the field, I don't get to put things through the paces as much as I would like to. I love to test products. So I asked my customers to now. And one of the first people I turned to was Jacob Myers. Uh, and he was happy to send it out for a month to one of his guys and just run it through the paces. And that's how I know when I handed it off to them, 
I don't know if you guys remember in Washington here a few months back where it was just a torrential downpour, torrential downpour. We were flooding and whatnot. And I, I gave this over to him on those days. And in my infinite wisdom, I uh, forgot to give him the pen. And I was super nervous because big raindrops, super wet, no pen. I was like, this is going to be terrible. He didn't have a single problem with the rain. Um, they had good connectivity. It hooked right up. And this is on a job site where... Um, they were having connection issues with the other with the other data collectors. So it, they have nothing but great things to say about it. Uh, here's a quote from him, and there's the man himself. Uh, give me a second to read that. And next. All right. So my whole thing about uh, having a sorry, moving the, the camera around, uh, having a uh, tablet as a data collector is that I can also have a PDF reader. So if I'm on a job site that I'm not that familiar with, say I'm filling in for someone and they say, hey, go lay out this wall. And I look at my data collector and this is what I see. A series of lines. It looks like several of them might be the wall. Some of them might be the grid line. What am I looking at? Well, at any point I can switch over to Bluebeam, Adobe, whatever your preferred is. And now I can look at the drawings and I can say, oh yeah, all right, looking down on that, that's what I'm looking at. All right, there's a side view. It looks like I was looking at a footing, which matches that over here. Then a wall, which matches these two lines here. Oh, yeah, but then there's a railing and a grid. So that's what I'm looking back. Now I can go back and confidently lay out. If I was using, say, a CS20 or any of the other ones that I can't do a, a PDF reader on, I would have to go back to the office, hopefully find the right prints. Sometimes they're out in the field. Sometimes they're not there. Um, find what page I was looking for and then go back out to the field and actually lay it out. It, it's all time. And that's what I, I can't stand wasting time. So uh, I like to operate in points or seconds per point. And I get that down to the, as few seconds to get a point on the ground as possible. And that goes up exponentially if I have to walk back to the office. I hope that all makes sense. All right. So God, I went through this pretty fast. All right, yes, we're on. So, although I am incredibly, incredibly good looking, I have decided to bring in a model for this next portion, all right? Uh, I'm gonna introduce you guys to Piper Like. If you ever bought from us and you've gotten it on time and in good working condition, it's probably because of Piper. If you got it late and it wasn't what you expected, it's probably because of me. Um, she runs everything behind the scenes here, but she is so generously offer to uh, show us what these look like going into our wonderful KR vest. By the way, if you don't own one of these vests, you should. They're excellent. All right, so we're going to start with the CS35 and see how that fits. Can't fit it in there. Yeah, that is, uh, uh, historically, uh, that is one of my biggest complaints is that the CS35 does not fit inside our vest or Seiko's vest, really. Yeah. Uh, you have to sit in your back pocket, which is always an option, but I'm not always that flexible and I don't, um, yeah. And not to mention, you still have to find a spot for this guy to go. All right, so we're gonna move on to our CS20, which is a great data collector, don't get me wrong. Hey Mac, I don't think we can see you. Oh, sorry, I know, we're, we're supposed to be seeing Piper. All right, so that, that kind of fits, unless you want to bend over or do something. All right, now we're going to go ahead and try the CS30. Now, you might be asking, why do I care if this fits in this pocket? Well, much like the donkey in the screen, I hate making multiple trips anywhere. So I'm going to pile as much stuff as I can on my back and get to there where I need to go and set up. Look at that. If you go ahead and button it up. Now, now all my hands are free. I don't have to worry about it falling out. It's a, it's, it's a lot of power in a small package. Thank you, Piper. Yep. Um, to me, that that is incredibly beneficial because now I'm not making multiple trips to go back and forth to grab equipment. Um, it's all about ease of use. This is, um, it's a, this program, uh, this data collector has a lot of power in a small package. It's eight gigs of RAM. Um, Incredible range. I have I have nothing but great things to say about it. Actually, 
let's see, do we have some questions? Oh, thank you for bringing that up, Rob. That's one thing I wanted to touch on, single battery life. One of the only complaints I've gotten about it so far is that even with the extended battery, they're only getting about a half day of shooting out of it. Now that is a company that is shooting nonstop all day. I would recommend if you go this route that you get, we sell an external four bay battery, battery charger and four batteries. So you can just grab two in the morning and then two later on if you need to, but you probably should you'd be able to get away with two, but it's always nice to have an extra two fully charged in case, right? Um, that is the one complaint. I saw that they can get up to eight hours on their specs, but uh, that's not what I'm seeing in the field. And that could also be the job sites we were using on was uh, where there were connection issues and it was struggling to connect all day. So it really drained on the battery. Um, long range Bluetooth config, long range distance. So the long range distance is 400 meters. There you go, yeah. Four to five, yeah. That's what that's what they were saying. They were saying about a half day. So with two fully charged batteries, you could you could do a full day's worth of work. Um, thank you for the input, Amos. Uh, so Kevin, we we uh, Leica is the distributor. They they uh, they have it made. It's sort of like the CS twenty. They have it made by someone to their specs, and so they they control. I don't know the actual name of the manufacturer, um, but they there is no Panasonic involved anymore. Like you send it to Leica, it doesn't go anywhere else. They repair them. Um, they they know everything about what goes into building them. Um, it's a huge benefit. Uh, back to the long the Bluetooth config. Once you set it up, uh, there's no longer a radio handle wizard or anything. You just you go through the app, the Captivate uh, app, and then you go right into uh, shooting with it, basically. Um, and it hooks up automatically every time, unless you need to hook up to a different instrument. Um, also, since it's Windows based, if you prefer to use Carlson or any other pro platforms that can go onto a Windows based platform, you can do that. However, if you do that, you probably will not have the uh, long range Bluetooth configuration. You can still use the internal Bluetooth, but the long range is specific to work with Captivate. And um, that is about all I had to present to you guys. I need to stop speaking so fast. Yes. Thank you, Brady. Um, all right. Thank you so much there, Mac. Um, I apologize. It looks like we've lost him. Uh, looks like his computer has reset in the middle of our lunch. Um, so we've got to roll with uh, what we have here. So I'm just looking to see, um, are there any additional questions that we can help um, address or answer for you guys for the uh, CS30? Uh, first question looks like from uh, Cameron, is this uh, looking or is this using the Windows 10 uh, system? Uh, to my knowledge, it's actually an internal, uh, basically uh, application that is manufactured by, uh, by Leica. So it is not necessarily run, running on Windows 10 that I'm aware of. But I will get a uh, direct answer for you here shortly. Uh, it, it is. It is Windows looks 10. Like you're asking if there is a keyboard option in the future. Um, as of right now, we haven't heard anything. If there will be a keyboard option, uh, that's why there's two different versions, whether that's the CS30 is touchscreen um, or the CS20 with a physical keyboard. Hey, Brady, can you hear me? It's Rob. Yep, yep. I got you now. Um, Mac is logging in. Um, it is Windows 10. It is Windows 10. Okay. It is a Windows 10 tablet. Um, the keyboard option, uh, that would be fantastic. I know the some other manufacturers have a clip-on um, clip keyboard. I'm not sure, but certainly we will find out about that. And um, I do know, I just had a question for the group, kind of. I know some of you, I'm looking at this group. It's uh, There's some of them that are getting, uh, if there's any questions, they're getting some CS30s. If there's any questions, the rain out in the rain, how it works in the rain is a big question for a lot of people. And it's great to hear that it's been tested, um, that the rain doesn't seem to affect it. So I don't know if anyone who's getting it had any further questions, but uh, that was a pretty good overview. And I know Max coming back on here shortly. Right. And it seems like uh, his uh, contact uh, they basically had it for uh, worked fantastic in rain. So even just using the touchscreen without the stylus, 
uh, which is fantastic. So we know that it's going that it should be working in those very wet environments. We do have for the group. We do have quite a few in our uh, fleet for demos. Uh, I have one, and Mac has one, so we are able to show it. I, I show it all the time. It's a it's very popular. A lot of a lot on the survey side um, prefer the controllers because of the buttons and the ability to. Um, the environmental conditions for the controllers work really well, but uh, the power of these things with the Windows 10 and, and the ability to load some CAD, you know, drawings a little easier and the bigger screen to see it is, you know, it's now becoming a preference and the preference, the environmental conditions uh, are easier to match with the CS30 and the tablet. So you have, you have options, you have options out there. So wonderful. Thanks for hopping on there, Rob. Uh, looks like we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up. We're getting close to our time here. Um, so if you do have any additional questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, looks like we had put that information through the chat. Uh, make sure to reach out to uh, Mac directly or to Rob. Uh, Mac's email, mkowalski at crink.net. Um, also, you have got some phone numbers in there. So with that, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on the next lunch.